Did you know that it takes 22 days and 10,000 hours to master something? So it takes 22 days to first form a skill, right? And, and really hone in and master that one specific habit or skill. But in order to truly, truly, truly master that skill, it takes time. It takes you to invest over 10,000 hours. So don't get stressed out if it takes you a long time or if you're struggling to master a skill. It certainly was something that was really challenging for me. So I worked a night job and my schedule was from 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. every single day. And this was great at first. You know, I mean, like, I got to sleep in, I got to work at a time where there weren't that many customers, I got snacks, you know, it was pretty quiet, so I got to talk to my coworkers who were all awesome, but I would get home every day at, after 2, 2 a.m., and I would wake up barely at 10 a.m. And then by the time I got ready and ate breakfast and checked my email, it was already time to go back to work again. How many people can identify with this? But yeah, this is the cycle of work that we experience every day. So how do you begin to change that cycle if you want to form new habits in your life that you're going to actually stick to? That was the question I had to ask myself as well. And the first thing I had to do is I had to make a decision that I wanted to change my life. And I had to stick to that decision no matter how intimidated I felt or no matter how you know, discouraged I felt. So the first thing I had to do was I had to figure out what I wanted. And what I wanted was to change my schedule. The only way I was going to be able to change my schedule at work is if I swallowed my pride and I talked to the management about it. Now, I was somebody who does not like to at all ruffle feathers or, you know, step on anybody's toes or get in anybody's way. That's how I was taught and that's how I was trained and that's how many of us operate through life. We don't want to cause any trouble. We just want to go along with the status quo. Well, that wasn't going to make any changes, honey. So I had to make a decision. And what I decided to do is approach management and say, you know what? I want to change my schedule. Yeah, I could worry about all the other things. I could worry about the fact that they may tell me, hey, Julia, you know what? There are other people that want to change their schedule to the morning and they have more priority over you because they've been working here longer. Okay, yeah, that's true. But once I made a decision in my mind, it didn't really matter what other factors were going to play into it. I was willing to do whatever it took to be able to accomplish that goal and stick to that decision. So once I put in my request to change my schedule, every single day after that, I would approach management, someone in management, and inquire about it. I would say, oh, I just wanted to make sure, you know, people have seen my request and, and that it was going in and that it's being processed. And, you know, if I got one reaction from someone who said, um, you know, I don't know how likely that's going to be, I said, okay. And I looked for my allies. I looked for people who were going to help me. I looked for resources. I looked for different ways, different people I could talk to to be able to accomplish my decision. Sometimes that meant speaking to other coworkers about how they changed their schedule. Sometimes that meant speaking to other supervisors. Sometimes that meant speaking to the captain of my store, the manager, the head manager of my store. I was going to do whatever it took. And you know what helped me the most? 
was having faith in here and talking to my ancestors, talking to the universe, asking the powers that be to help me to accomplish my goal. You know, I don't know what you believe in and whatever you believe in is awesome, but there are powers greater than we are that can really help us when we ask for it. So ask for what you want. And you know, one day after asking and being determined every single day, I mean, my schedule changed. And I was able to start working mornings. It took maybe like a month or two for my schedule to change. But once it changed, I was able to start working a morning shift. And when I worked a morning shift, my entire life changed because I had to refocus my entire schedule. And I had all this new time that I could do something with. But what was I gonna do? I wanted to change my life. I wanted to, you know, work during the day so I could be a human being and not feel like a vampire. Wake up at a decent hour. So at that point I was waking up at eight, you know, walking my dog and eating breakfast with my partner so I could get to work by 10. And then this voice whispered to me and it said, write a book. I thought to myself, <laughs> me, write a book. Okay, yeah, right. There's this concept called imposter syndrome. It is the queen or the king, however you want to re reference it, of self-sabotage. It is where you have a grand idea that is sent to you from the universe, from the gods. And it comes to you and you think, wow, this is awesome. And then fear starts to set in and play with your head. And you say, I can never do that. I'm not capable of doing that. Yeah, right, other people can do that. I can't write a book, I can't do that, yeah, right. And you put it to the back of your mind and you never think about it again. That's imposter syndrome. And I have suffered from imposter syndrome way too many times, but this time, I wasn't gonna let it get to me. Not this time. So I had to make another decision. And I had to figure out how, even though I didn't know what I was gonna write about, how I was gonna write this book. What I was going to do to make steps to write this book. A lot of it isn't about the part where you're typing and figuring out what to write. A lot of it is about getting your mindset in the frame that you're going to be able to sit down and actually do that activity. So for me, I had to start reading and figuring out what other people have done to be able to achieve what they want to achieve. And I came across this amazing book by Timothy Ferris. And if you know who he is, amazing guy you should research him he wrote this book called the four hour work week the four hour work week google it it is this amazing book where it talks all about how he changed his life from working a regular job to working uh, four hours a week on things that he really wanted to do it really encourages you to think outside of the box and learn how you can live the life that you want to live without sacrificing all of your time working at another a regular job. So I devoured that book, honey. I read that book and I was so interested in that book and it really changed my mindset. And the first thing I had to do, I realized, was take back my schedule for myself because I wasn't really paying attention to the hours that I was spending every day and how I was spending it. I was more making excuses like, I don't have enough time to do this. I don't know how I'm going to accomplish this. Oh my gosh, I have so many responsibilities. Yeah, okay, you do. But at that point, I didn't really know how to take control of my day. So the first thing I had to do was I had to figure out how I could go to work full time and still find enough time 
to write my book. So the first thing I did was this. I looked at the fact that I had 24 hours in the day, right? Everyone has 24 hours in the day. And of course, we all have responsibilities that we must achieve in those 24 hours. But you have 24 hours in the day. So what I did first was I wrote out every single hour, line by line. And I wrote out what I was doing from midnight to 11.59 p.m. on those hours, each single day, each single minute. And when I started to do that, honey, I started owning and taking control of my life. Because remember, this is your life and you're the only one who's in control of changing it. So I figured out that the only way I was going to write was to be able to have some quiet time. Now, I live with my partner and, and I have a dog too. And you know, in order to have quiet time where it was just me, just me by myself, I needed to wake up a lot earlier in order to achieve that. So I decided that I will wake up at 4 a.m. every single day because I would have four solid hours four solid hours to dedicate just to me, just to writing, just to getting my life together. And so, was it easy? Definitely not. I had to wake up at 4 a.m. I could not wrap my head around it. I was waking up at 8 o'clock. So I started training myself little by little, little by little, little by little, 30 minutes every, every week. I would increase my alarm to an earlier hour. So let's say I started waking up at 8 a.m. That next week, I started selling, setting, setting my alarm for 7.30. And I stuck to setting my alarm at 7.30 every single day, waking up at that time every single day until I mastered it and didn't have to hit the snooze button anymore. Once I mastered the 7.30, I started moving to 7. And I started waking up at that time every single day until I could master it. And I did that for every half hour increment until I could wake up at 4. Now, when I started waking up at 4 every day, did I always wake up at 4? No, honey, I didn't always wake up at 4 because it's hard. But I had a goal to write a book, and that's what kept me going. And that's all that matters. So I started waking up at four every day and I would pound away at that keyboard, pound away at that keyboard. Because as I said earlier, sometimes it's just about the habit of sitting down to do something. That's the toughest part is getting there, is showing up, showing up every day. So after doing that, for about two to three months, I realized I had finished my first book. And it's an ebook, and it's called Networking Success Through Simple Steps. And it's all of the things that I learned through having my own networking events business. And it's available on Amazon, um, Networking Success Through Simple Steps. You can check it out. But it was the first time I sat down to dedicate time to myself to my own goals and I achieved them and it felt amazing and then I started to think oh wow what other things can I achieve and I used that 4 a.m. time slot to create new things so I started creating a blog right I started working on other writing there's so much you can achieve once you start to carve out a habit for yourself. And sometimes carving out habits means cutting out distractions, means cutting out time that you spend unnecessarily. And that might be people, that might be watching TV, that might be on social media. Whatever that is, you have to really get clear about how you're spending your time. So this is what I want you to do for me tonight. Hope you can see this. On this piece of paper, what I've done is I've written out each hour from midnight all the way to 11 p.m. And under that, I've written out goals, 
habit I will master. The habit I will master. And under that, why I want to master this habit. You end up a reason for why. So I want you to write out on a piece of paper from 12 midnight all the way to 11 o'clock at night, what are the things that you do with your schedule every day? I want you to write those out. Even if it means you're writing, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping for the first six or seven or eight hours. Fine, whatever you're doing. But write out every single hour and it will be magic for you. You will see, wow, I can really cut out all this time I'm binge watching on Netflix. Or I don't have to take an hour to take this phone call where I'm talking about things that, yes, are great, but it's taking up a lot of time and I have a goal right now. Whatever things you need to rule out, you have to rule out so you can accomplish your goal. Remember, this is your life. And you are the only one responsible for changing it. You can change your life because you can master your schedule. You can form habits because you're in control. <laughs>